about your question, you know, uh, regarding narratives, you know, I, I grew up with way different views than I have now. I, I didn't know anything about the Palestinian people. I just knew they were our enemy. I, I was taught the, the deep history of the Jewish people in the land of Israel. I was taught about uh, the horrors of anti-Semitism around the world and the, and the horrors of the Holocaust and how after 2000 years in exile, we were finally allowed to return home. And yet we could not live in peace because these other people just want, want us dead. That, that's all I knew. Now, I wasn't taught to hate Palestinians. I wasn't taught that violence against them is good or positive. I was taught that we need to defend ourselves against them and they want us dead. And we said never again and never again means never again. That means we won't let another Holocaust happen. We will defend ourselves. Um, th that that deep-rooted ideology, and uh, it might be important to mention that I'm, I'm considered 10th generation Israeli. My mm -hmm. family moved to the hilltops of Hebron in 1812 from Vilna, Lithuania. I, ha however, was born and grew up in the United States, as you can hear by my English. Um, but, you know, these deep, deep-rooted teaching that I had from a young age led me to the conclusion that I'm going to, you know, finish high school and I'm going to join the IDF because that's what any good Zionist would do. So that's what I did. I moved to Israel. I joined the IDF. Interestingly, it was my time in the IDF where I began to have a transformation that that led me to where I am today as an activist who's trying to build bridges. I was looking at a poster on the wall and I saw a picture of Hamas training techniques. I saw Hamas soldiers training. And there was a picture of a Hamas soldier crawling through sand right around my age, maybe a few years older. And you know, I was crawling through sand that same day. And I looked at the Hamas soldier and I saw myself. I saw myself in my sworn enemy. And I started asking myself, is the biggest difference before, between us simply dependent on the side of a border we were born on? Does his family view him as a hero and me as a terrorist? Is that possible? Now, again, this didn't change my views overnight because deep-rooted fear-based teachings can sometimes take a lifetime to change. But this certainly planted a seed in my head where I started to understand that the difference between me and my enemy is simply dependent on where we were born. And had I been born in their shoes, I would be them and I would think of myself as the enemy. And that slowly changed the way I view things. And I said, if the only difference is dependent on where we were born, how could you be guilty based on the geographical location you were born? And how could we think that they deserve less or that we can act harshly towards them because of where they were born? That's just getting a worse roll of the dice. So I, I began, and, and, and not to get confused, we do need to hold people accountable regardless of envi environment because accountability is a very important aspect of, of having a healthy society. But that being said, we cannot shy away from the, the understanding that we are products of our environment. So this got me to realize the Palestinians are my brothers and sisters. They're human beings just like I am. They deserve the same rights just as I do. And, you know, I'm here. Um, and I, th these ideas have developed after the, the army. But as a soldier, I was doing that to um, keep Israeli secure. But then I understood that true security comes not from being in the military, it comes from achieving peace. That is long-term security. If we have true peace, military matters much less. 